Hi everyone, Drew Politti here. I have been asked to introduce my experience with the Lighten International Artist Exchange Program. The LIAEP is a grant funding opportunity for artists who want or need to travel to conduct a specific arts research project. I was a participant with the program in 2015 when I went to Taiwan, also called the Republic of China for eight months, to take part in two artist residencies I was selected for. In this brief presentation, I will discuss where I went as part of the Lighten program, unpack the thinking behind a favorite project I worked on, and pass on some information about how you can get involved as well. Traveling to different locations to investigate conditions around ceramic art making has been something I've been interested in for more than a decade now. We were not able to travel much when I was younger, so I have made it a point to get away as much as possible these days. I like to say that my artwork looks for places where culture, craft, and clay collide. When I took part in the Light and Exchange program, I was simultaneously involved in a fellowship from the Taiwan Ministry of Foreign Affairs called the Taiwan Fellowship. With the support of both of these programs, I was able to travel to Taiwan and make art for eight months. Additionally, I was able to take part in a three-month residency at the Taipei Inga International Ceramics Museum in the northern part of Taiwan near the capital city. Right after Inga, I was an artist in residence for six months at the Tainan National University of the Arts. Taiwan is an amazing island with a very diverse and significant culture surrounding the arts. Taiwan's Tourist Information Board calls Taiwan the gateway to Asia, and historically this is true. The island was called Formosa during the Age of Exploration and used as a shipping port by many larger empires. This led to the layering of cultures into what is now referred to as Taiwanese culture. My research project was curious about how to contextualize all of this history while looking at contemporary Taiwan and specifically examining the development of symbolic graphic languages used on ceramics in the region. During my residency at the Inga Museum, I was invited by one of the curators to take part in an exhibition the museum was planning called The Imaging of Blue and White. Prior to coming to Taiwan, I had been in mainland China for six years, and my work was seeking a new approach and direction to blue and white decoration on ceramics. For this exhibition, I opted to make a variation of some work I had previously done, which involved hollow casting flattened vessel forms. This project allowed me the freedom to make work and slip off to the National Library to look for different historical manuscripts about ceramics and cultural products of both Taiwan and China. I was lucky enough at the library to stumble upon old shipping records of when Taiwan was used as a port and to get a greater sense of how ceramics became important to culture and the symbolism of Taiwan. After three months in Taiwan, I moved from Taipei in the northwest, north central region to Tainan in the southwest. Tainan is the oldest urban area in southern Taiwan from when the island was a Dutch holding. I was invited to take up residence with graduate and undergraduate students at Tainan National University for the Arts. This became a time to process the cultural information I had discovered in the National Library. In preparation for a solo exhibition I was having, I opted to make a series of molds and displays that explored luck and abundance. Tainan National University is located outside of Tainan City in the lush farm area of Guantian. The university is surrounded by mango orchards and farm fields where every week a new tropical fruit or food comes into season. These orchards made for fantastic bike rides through the area and getting to see all of the changes really communicated that feeling of agricultural richness. In Taiwanese culture, similar to folk beliefs in Chinese culture, abundance is represented by the color red and curvilinear, round, voluminous forms. Fish, with all their round scales and eggs, 
as well as their pronunciation in Chinese, are synonymous with good luck. My thinking was to explore this notion by creating a dinnerware set that references all of these thoughts of abundance. I had planned to partner with a local chef and create an interactive experience that would explore this. As I began that piece, though, the rainy season set in and made slip casting a much slower process than I had anticipated. To occupy myself as I waited out the tropical rains and all the humidity, I made some new molds and began exploring the opposite of good luck at the same time. If good things are round and bright, bad things in traditional Taiwanese thinking are angular and emaciated and devoid of color, often just made white. Through this, I began exploring an item that I was calling a cup of famine. The final presentation of the famine cups paired their sharp angular forms with a custom-made shelf. They were presented in a symmetrical series of four to take advantage of numerology and cultural beliefs that four sounds a lot like the word for death and thus is a bit of an unlucky number. This is very similar to the way 13 or black cats are thought to be unlucky in Western folk tales. This piece is successful in my mind because of its quiet austerity and its presence, all the while it is nothing similar to the kindness and joy I found in Taiwan. It has come in my mind to be a counter symbol. In Taiwan, a colleague told me about a common saying that if you've never tasted bitterness, how can you know sweet? So this work has occurred to me because I had so much fun and enjoyed my time in Taiwan that it seemed silly or even impossible not to explore the other side of that in some way. In February 2016, I wrapped up my time in Taiwan and began the perilous process of packing. My work, including famine cups, was crated and flown back to the United States to take part in a solo exhibition I was having at St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia. The exhibition featured work made in Taiwan and work made the previous years in China. For me, it was a nice retrospective and a way to look back over five years and see what had happened and what new possibilities might occur. So, as I begin to close this presentation, I thought I would provide an information slide with all of the details of the groups that assisted me throughout my project. First of all, I want to thank the Lighten International Artists Exchange Program for giving me the opportunity to go to Taiwan. As well, I would really like to send a sincere thanks to the Taiwanese government for selecting my research to participate in the Taiwan Fellowship. At the Inga Museum, I want to thank Wen Hung Chung and all of his staff, especially Ken, for their help and their technical assistance. At Tainan National University of the Arts, I want to thank all of the staff, specifically the Director of Graduate Studies, Professor Ching Yuan Chang. If you're interested in any of the programs that I discussed, feel free to follow the links presented in this slide for more information.
Finally, if any of the information or the stories here have sparked your interest, please feel free to follow my adventures and my production on social media. I have just returned in August from a six-month journey in South Korea. It was thoroughly documented on Instagram and Facebook, and you can find it under the username Drupalitty. If this presentation has left you with any questions, feel free to contact me on social media, WeChat, Kakao, or Line, whichever you prefer for wherever you are. Thank you again for sharing this time with me, and happy National Clay Week!